as we uh, sit uh, in our offices at Health Affairs and to talk with people out in the field and see some of the submissions that are coming in, we see some common themes, especially common themes for hospitals around this emphasis on care coordination. A lot of money is wasted because we coordinate care so poorly. Uh, so institutions are saying it's time for us to get outside the building and form relationships with entities, even entities we may not own or control. Nursing homes, home care agencies, uh, others in the community, nonprofit organizations that work to support families. Anybody we can think of who will help us create a better network of care coordination. So big emphasis on that, huge emphasis on systematization, mergers, consolidation, of course, uh, purchase of existing of uh, 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 physician practices is a key phenomenon going on in many markets. Big effort to take out unnecessary costs and essentially an overall conclusion among hospitals that they have to learn to live on the rates that Medicare pays them. This is a huge mind shift for hospitals because of course the conventional hospital storyline is that we are quote underpaid for the care we provide by the public payers, Medicare and Medicaid. So we must, we must charge much more to the private payers to recoup our overall costs. This uh, storyline is now going away as institutions realize that almost all payment will now be converging down toward Medicare rates. So they have to learn to live on Medicare rates. Um, and in fact, David Hunter, who is well known in the academic medical center community. He's a little bit like, when I was on the board at Dartmouth-Hitchcock, all you had to do was say the name David Hunter, and it was like the Antichrist, uh, because he runs a firm that comes in and takes costs out of systems and tells people essentially how to uh, keep the wolf from the door. He uh, says nowadays, you cannot be in the hospital business today and not be making money on Medicare and even Medicaid rates, because that's where all the rates are going to go. So this is, a, as I say, a whole new world. Big themes that we're hearing about from physicians uh, are obviously the need to dramatically boost primary <coughs> care capacity because of the very, very clear evidence that systems that have robust primary care spend less than ours with a very fragmented and fractured primary care system where people end up getting a lot of care from specialists. So big emphasis on that, big emphasis, on, again, on systematization mergers and consolidation, again, many physicians asking to be bought by hospital systems and particularly on the specialty side. Uh, huge emphasis now on rationalizing use of specialists and rationalizing, you know, means less. <laughs> it means less use of specialists, more, more access of people to primary care and much more uh, emphasis now obviously on the practice of evidence-based medicine uh, and meeting various performance metrics as a condition of payment. Uh, big themes for health plans, uh, as uh, many people will tell you, the health plans aren't exactly confident that the next few years will be the best years they ever had. Why? Health insurance exchanges, right? We are going to make the old business of risk selection go away as everybody comes into uh, a health insurance market. So, Insurers have just been operating individual and small group health plans really see their business essentially going away. Uh, they have other pressures under the Affordable <coughs> Care Act, meeting the new medical loss ratios. Uh, larger plans essentially are seeing, increasingly seeing their business as being the back office of accountable care organizations, forging relationships with provider groups to help them manage utilization and if we move to global payment, which is, face it, insurance, essentially bringing uh, that actuarial capacity, uh, an administrative capacity, and risk analysis capacity to these new provider groups that will be forming around uh, accountable care institutions and lending uh, them their expertise. Uh, big themes essentially out of all this for everybody are uh, we got to take 25 or 30 percent of the costs out of the system because if we're going to live on Medicare rates, that's what it's going to take. Uh, lots of institutions uh, uh, are thinking about, well, how, if we imagine, for example, an organization like Kaiser Permanente, which uh, has uh, roughly speaking about 8 million enrollees, 
and it has, it's an, essentially it's an insurance company with a separate but related medical group. When somebody goes to a Kaiser doctor, uh, it, they don't, there isn't a claim that's generated that is sent over to the insurance end of Kaiser. It's all one big organization, so there's no, there are no claims per se. Lots of uh, entities are saying, well, how do we get the most to be like Kaiser Permanente without being a Kaiser Permanente? How do we get rid of claims? First of all, how do we get rid of the claims that we don't need because we're doing things to people that they don't need? So we'll take out those claims, but then let's also get beyond this claims mentality, which is the volume mentality. I'm just going to bill for this and bill for that, as uh, the Attorney General said earlier. Uh, so this is the new paradigm that people are struggling to figure out how they're going to come closest to being. Bottom line is a health plan is probably not going to look five or ten years from now anything like a big health plan looks today. It will have a very different relationship uh, arguably with many provider groups.